It's just going to be very brief. We'll close time. Back to the Apostle chapter 1 and verse number 8. The Bible recorded, it said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and, Samaria, and to the hands of the earth. Among other things, one of the things we benefit from praying in the Holy Ghost is that we are contacting the power of God. The power of God is made available when the Holy Ghost comes upon us and we begin to pray in other tongues. But the power primarily is actually for soul winning. I'd like us to know that anywhere that we are found, we are God representative anywhere you are found. Thy kingdom come implies that anywhere we find ourselves, the kingdom of God should be planted and be established there. The Bible said, everywhere your, the feet of your soul shall tread upon shall give you for a possession. So anywhere the child of God is found, the kingdom of God should be represented there. Among other things, while we are praying in the Holy Ghost is that we are contacting the power of God like never before. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness. Can I tell you something? We are witnesses anywhere we are found. If you are a teacher, you are a witness there. While we are praying, among other things that came into my heart while we are praying was that it doesn't matter the kind of anointing you carry, the kind of gifting that God gives to you. If you lack character, you are doomed for life. Because nobody listens. No matter the gifting you carry, no matter the anointing of God upon your life, when there is no godly and good character that you exhibit, your gift will even frustrate you. Nobody will marry somebody with a bad character. Nobody will practically want to listen to someone with a bad character. The reason why we are not witnesses in the place to which we are found is simply because character is lacking in our life. The reason why many people are not bold enough to represent Jesus anywhere they are found is simply because character is bad. The person you exchange bed with in the name of fornication in the place where you walk, can you ever preach or witness Jesus to the person. The person you collided together in the office to actually uh, a contract that's supposed to be 100,000, you said just put one zero, make it one million. Can you ever preach Jesus to that kind of a person? The reason why we are much in number in our days as Christians, we have churches everywhere, I tell you something, and yet the impact is far, is because we have not been fully transformed by the things that the kingdom of God has made available to us. You will never pray in tongues for two hours. And yet things are not shifting in your life. When things are not shifting, check your life. The Bible said it that speaketh in an own tongue, speaketh not unto man, but speaketh unto God. He said, be it in the spirit. Speak at mysteries. There are mysteries around our life that cannot be demystified until we pray in tongues. How come we pray capital letter tongues and yet things are not changing in our life? It is a guarantee that we might need to work on ourselves. A thief is a thief. A liar is a liar. A liar in the name of God is a liar. A thief in the name of God is a thief. A thief that is dressed like a Christian is still a thief. A liar in the name of Christian is still a thief. How come that the cloud, you see, I could see the cloud of his glory as we begin to pray. The power of God was so manifested. If anybody leave this atmosphere the same, there is a problem with you. God will never force himself on anybody. I've seen many persons who count numbers of years in churches and yet nothing changes around their life. You know why? They are just fulfilling religion. Now, many people are just in church just okay, for the fun of it. Okay, you see, I just have to be in church so that pastor won't shout. Okay, 
your phone will ring. You can't pray. Little. Who, which God are you praying to? If you are God, would you collect that kind of prayer? If the people who are calling your phone can actually help you, who do you need to pray some prayers in the first place? Where do you place God? There are character. Our life cannot be. If Jesus is not for all, then stop pretending. If you are doing little with God, oh God, I just want to be a Christian because I love to be in choir. I just want to sing. We have come to draw, oh, have a beautiful song. Let it not be the reason why you are serving God. There are many instrumentalists that are not born again. They play for God, but they are just borrowed vessels. Your soul needs to prosper spiritually first. Any other thing you are doing is secondary. There are drummers that will go to hell. There are dicking that they are placed in hell fire. Even have boys got that. Let the prosperity of your soul be intact. Be face to face with God. Let your heart open. No, don't be Christian in church. Be Christian anywhere you are found. Thy kingdom come. Let the weed of God be planted anywhere you are found. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall become witness unto me. You shall become witness unto me. The reason why we are not witnesses unto God is number one, start with character. Many of us are not transformed. We are just Christian by title. We are fighting for position in church. I've been in this church now for more than six months. They've not even pronounced me Dickie. And when the pronounce you the case, they sit in front. You say, yes. And you are still taking beer at home. Who are you deceiving? That you have a place in front. Even sit in the front of the pastor. There are pastors that will go to hell. I'm sorry, you might not like what I'm saying. But let's not waste our time and let's not waste our, let's not waste our precious time in the things where we pray for. You see, many of us use prayer to cover our nonsense. You say, okay, I pray. Many of us can go to prayer houses and kill the enemy that never even exists. Oh, all the enemy that say I will not prosper die by fire. They, they won't die. You, are, you see, I preached a sermon many times back, if you can remember, when I was preaching about the fire of God. I talked about the consuming fire. You see, the Bible speaking in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29, it said, For our God is a consuming fire. And one of the primary, one of the primary mission of consuming fire is to consume the enemy of God. Remember? In the case of Elijah and the prophet of Baal, he called down fire from heaven. And the Bible said the fire consumed the altar of the prophet of Baal, including the water he licked it off. That's like an aspect of the consuming fire of God. Now look at this. When you call God, oh God, let the enemy of my life be consumed with fire. What are you saying? You are calling all oh, consuming fire of God. Come down and consume your enemies. Now, anytime you want to pray that prayer, make sure you are not an enemy of God first. Because when you call that consuming fire, oh God, consume my enemy. When consuming fire come, consuming fire consume all the enemies of God, including your own enemies. But if you are an enemy of God, you will be consumed first. There are people that I just claim I love God, but don't talk about my dressing. Don't, talk, don't say, don't talk, don't go there. It's my heart that is serving God. It's, Jesus is in my heart. No, sir, no, 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 no. What you wear reflect the state of your mind. When you see a madman, the way a madman dress, you will know the state of the mind. So the way you dress actually tells us the state of your mind. Is that not so? Bonnet, open boot, no cover. It's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. So the power that we are contacting this time is primarily for something. For witness. For what? Somebody say for witness. And that's why we need to deal with our character and be transformed by the world. Do you know why soul winning is very difficult in our days? Do you know why soul winning is difficult in our days? The people you want to witness to, you are crook together. Some of the person you want to tell them, Jesus loves you, come to Jesus. <laughs> they know a few things you are doing wrong. Somebody only pour water in front of your room. You say, if nobody say, 
I just come out from church. I, I for sure you say I'll be Edo Pekin. If you are not from Edo, you are from Evo. And that's why you are called the child of God. When Edo demon are still worrying you, it's a report card that you are not transformed. Am I sensible here? You are from heaven. I for sure have you worry, have you feel. You know, they carry last for that place. I go break your head. No, sir. No, 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 no. You are from heaven. Where you claim you came from, you only pass through that place for a system of accountability. A time is coming. All of us will return to our God. And in that place, they won't ask you what state did you come from. They won't even ask you, are you from Nigeria? Everybody will be face to face with God. And everybody will give account of what you do with your life. Can I beg you something? We are not praying in vain. We are not praying for fun. We are contacting the power of the Most High God. And that power is primarily for what? For witness. When you are empowered and you are witness unto Christ, the things you are actually dying to get will begin to follow you. You need clothes. Now, I will be surprised that in the little time that some of us are praying, you are praying for your business. You have, you have wasted time. Yeah, you have wasted time. So God, Kiaba, in my business, oh God, Kiaba, you have wasted time. Say, oh God, that my school issue, you have wasted time. He said, oh God, this is my daughter, oh God, you have wasted time. When you are empowered, things follow you. It is it that gives the power to get wealth. There is a level of empowerment you have that money comes to you without praying. You don't believe me? Psalm 110. He says, sit down at my right hand until I make the enemy thy foot too. He says, thy people shall be willing. He said, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. He said, root thou. Verse 2 said, the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. He said, root thou in the midst of your enemy. When that rod is sent, you begin to rule over your enemies. You be bearing a table before me in the presence of my enemy. There is a level of empowerment that you have. Even you will never know that your enemy exists. Believe me. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, Psalm 110 and verse 1. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemy your foot too. What is he saying? When you are empowered, your enemy will come under your feet. He said, the Lord, verse 2 said, the Lord shall send the rod of their strength out of Zion. He said, root thou, root thou. This implies that when that empowerment comes, you begin to rule over your enemies. Verse 3 said, Thy people shall be willing in the days of thy power. And that translation said, Thy people shall become volunteers. When you are empowered enough, your enemy will become vulnerable. They become volunteers to you. I'll tell you a funny story. They brought a little girl that was a witch many years back when I was in that classroom in Lucy. 11 year old girl, I can't remember. Now, yeah, around 11 year old. If you beat that girl, it's not that you break hand, you won't sell, and all of that. And they say, oh, Go to that person. And they brought a young girl. Maybe many of you have heard this story before. And I told the young girl, I said, ah, how come your people did not follow you here? He said, they are not far. They are the gate. They only stop. I said, why didn't they follow you here? He said, they are about 200 meters away. He said, they are about, he said, they are at the gate. The classroom where I was and the gate, it was just about 200 meters away. He said, why would they not come inside here? He said, as long as I'm here, they won't come. As long as you are here, they won't come. He said, they are the gate. But this is some people will be beating the girl and they will be breaking hand. And me, I was fighting the girl and yet she could not do anything. Thy people shall be willing in the days of thy power. When power is made available, everything answers to you. It is empowerment first before delivery. When an empowerment rests upon you over anything you do, you become first class in that you become first class in that race. It is it that gives the power to get wealth. When power comes, a dimension of his empowerment comes and you can create value. Wealth will come. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will become my witness. You know why you cannot be a witness to people? You are empowered. Many of us, but character is far. 
You don't want to be transformed by the word of God. At all, at all. At all. He said, if it is party, pastor, don't go there. Don't go there. I'm a, I'm a very good usher in church. And then just end it there. He said, but this party and the kind of this, he said, no, pastor, don't go there. Club every Friday is not a problem. It's all for me to relax. If Jesus is not the Lord of all over your life, then he's not Lord at all. If Jesus is not Lord of all over your life, then he's not what? He's not Lord at all. It should be all for all. Some for some, none for none. If you are giving a part of yourself to God, don't be surprised. You might be seeing his mercy. But when you give all, unto the altar of Christ I lay my life, then everything begins to answer. Let me read two scriptures and then we'll close. After the apostle chapter 2, after the promise, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall bear witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Look at after the apostle chapter 2, read verse 1. He said, but when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all together in one accord in one place. We are in the day of Pentecost. Pentecost of that one has passed, but we are trusting of an experience that I ever come that day. And then we are all together also in one place right now. He said, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven and of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat upon each of them. Can I tell you something? I saw the cloud over our lives while we were praying. The atmosphere was charged. The power of God was present. And I tell you something, I, I see many of us empowered tonight to take delivery of that which it looks as if it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Look at verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. We have been speaking in tongues right now as the Spirit gave out utterance. But don't forget, I said in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 and verse 8, that after the Holy Ghost come upon them, they said they shall become what? Witness. They shall become what? Witness. Now, if you read down, jump to verse 7. He said, they were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are not these people who speak Galileans? And it was that we hear each one speaking in, a, in which we were born. Now, they began to complain that what kind of a language is this? Jump to verse 13. He said, others mocking, saying they were full of new wine. There is a realm you will pray in tongues to that look as if you are, you, are, you are actually full of alcohol. This was what the scripture is saying not in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. He said, Be not be drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, there is a dimension of you praying in tongues that look as if you are intoxicated with wine. I've enjoyed that realm a little. That you cannot control the things you say anymore. The Holy Ghost alter your tongues in speaking. Ha! Ah. Let's move forward. In verse 14, he said, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and said, Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known unto you and hear my words. For these are not drunk, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is the third hour of the day. They don't drink wine. They don't drink wine in the morning. That's about 9 a.m. They don't drink wine that time in the morning. But now, can take trophy anytime now. He didn't know where is our shame now? Where do we leave our conscience? That we do things that are bad and we feel nothing. Why are we killing our conscience? This is alarming. Even those who drink those days, they don't drink in the morning. In our own days, in the name of trying to clear one JD that does not exist, you drink Ogogoro in the morning. You say you are taking a go. Sorry. Now, Peter began to, immediately that they saw that Peter began to witness unto them. But can I tell you this, people? After that power came and the people saw, Peter began to witness unto them. If you read down, 3,000 people came to Jesus same day. The empowerment you receive today, at least 3 persons should follow you to church. 3,000 souls follow them. 3,000. 
One beauty of empowerment is that the things that are difficult for you will become easy. That's one thing. The souls that are difficult for you will become easy. But primarily, empowerment is for witness. When we demonstrate miracles, is for witness. When Lazarus rose from the dead, do you know how many who came to Jesus? A lot of persons in return. The Bible recorded in John chapter 12 that even the high priest needed to go and check. At the point they wanted to kill you, they wanted to kill Lazarus so that that testimony would not continue. Study John chapter 12. But nevertheless, that miracle is tangible and a lot of persons came, became obedient to faith. When the power of God is demonstrated primarily is to win souls. Primarily is to bring people into the kingdom. Don't receive this power and just, hey, oh my business. Your business is not as important. When you meet the need of God, God is committed to your own need. The need of God is souls. Every great man, every great man be become vulnerable to their need. Do you agree with me? You will never see any big man that need anything. They can offer any amount just to get it. Every man, every woman become vulnerable because of what they need. They can pay anything for it. Well, I remember one young man, I think one, one, one of the Igbo young man that I met recently told me he's trying to put a particular deal and it's in some few hundreds of dollars, some few thousands of dollars and he wrote me and he said, Pastor, if you can pray that this will happen, this is the amount I'm going to give you. I said, no, I won't even pray. I don't pray because of this kind of reward. You can't buy my prayers. He said, don't worry, I'll give you the title for I said, I said no, 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 no. That's not the essence. I met a, one, I met a young man sometimes ago, and I, I think I gave the chat to Sister Mary to read and my wife. The young man is actually of the other faith, and he told me, and he said, hey, I'll go, I should speak to him and then God opened my eyes and began to I told him the name of his village I told him a lot of things and he was surprised and I told him this is the problem you are passing through you were surprised and he said pray for me tell me whatever that I will do that will get out of this problem immediately when he mentioned that I know what he was trying to say he said any amount you ask I will give you I said no give your life to Christ <laughs> he said I have been to prophet before they don't even tell me this way Honestly, I still have that chat. He said, they don't talk to me this way. Tell me how much you need and I will pay. You just do your prayers. I said, no. Give your life to Jesus. I, I met Sister Mary to read that chat. I gave my wife to read that chat also. Give your life to Christ. That's what is important. Primarily, the power is for so many. I, will, I could be able to see prophetically to see into the life of the young man, which was which I missed him, but nevertheless, that God opened my eyes should not be to collect money. No, it should be that you must come to Jesus. Let's close. Tomorrow we are going to be here. We are going to pray in two hours again. On Thursday, on Friday, we are going to be here praying two hours. On Saturday, we are here praying two hours. And on Sunday, it's going to be our healing experience service. That's going to be by 5 p.m. And the Lord has spoke to me, rivers of healings. The Lord, has, the Lord spoke to me about rivers of healing about two weeks back. I was praying in the, I was lying down in the office and I was praying. And then the Lord began to speak to me about that healing experience service. It's going to be healing for all. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So please, let's get empowered in this season. Primarily, when we are praying in this season, let's get empowered. And I tell you something, if you are truly a genuine witness, now let me say this. How many of you are responsible that you employ somebody and you will not pay the person? Let me see. Now. There's nobody that will employ people and will not pay them. Do you agree with me? If you're a witness for Jesus, will Jesus pay you? And tell me Jesus is not responsible to pay you. Now, the problem with a lot of persons is that we carry our need more than God. Let me eat first before, oh God, no, no, I eat first. Our problem, even senior God in our heart. The reason why many of us go to church is not because we love God, it's because I hear my problem will be solved there. It's not God we are looking for. If problem begins to toss you up and down, it will never finish. You know all the prayer houses and your problem will not finish. 
But when you become God motivated, even the problem is silent. How many of you have taken drugs this year? Maybe Pastor Mo. Just maybe Pastor Mo. How many of us have taken drugs this year? This April. Now do your hand like this. Let me see your hand. Pastor Mo. Let me see your hand. Did you see any of my boys? Listen up your hand. Did you see any of my boys? Listen up your hand. One day the Lord spoke to me. He said, This boy does. One morning the Lord spoke to me. He said, These young men did not know that they are here. That's why they are not sick. God spoke to me. If you consider the kind of mosquito that is present in this place, you have malaria. The Lord spoke to me early. One morning I woke up. I, I finished praying one morning. So I said, I think God to speak to me. He didn't say anything. So I wanted to go and sleep. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Do you know these guys are not sick because they are hanging around here? When last did you take them to hospital? I've never taken a drug this year. When God blesses you, you preserve your household. Anybody that will become distraction to you, God will keep them. Do you send up my guys raising up their hand? God spoke to me about it. He said they won't be sick. Why? Because it will become distraction to you if they are. Which one is better? To be empowered and your household is secured. I've not taken my pastor money this year. And if it is a gimmick that I'm lying about it, it will be reflecting on this one. If you genuinely hang around, you will never be sick. I know it. I know it. Ask my wife, when last did she, did she take drugs? If it is a problem that you want to solve, that you are looking for, okay. But if you are looking for God, you will be at rest. It might be challenging, but you will be at rest. Let's close. We'll meet tomorrow by 6 p.m. And please, Make sure somebody follows you. Make sure that somebody follows you. 